What's up, everyone? This is James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com, and I'm bringing you episode number five of Teach Me How to Lightroom. Today, we're taking a look at a portrait shot at nighttime using only the available light. You can see the settings here. We took it at f1.2, pushed the ISO only to 2500, pretty low ISO, especially for being at nighttime. With all the city lights here in the Boca and our model wearing some pretty trendy athletic clothing, I feel like a more moody edit is going to be best for this type of picture. So let's get right into it. I'm not going to do any cropping here because I'm very happy with the in-camera composition that I was able to achieve. My lines appear to be straight and I like where she landed right in a third. So how I start most of my edits, I'm going to start with the medium contrast curve right on the tone curve here gets us started. So I feel like her skin here is just a little bit underexposed. So we're going to do a few things in the initial edit to really focus on the way the model looks. So we're going to start with opening the exposure up. We're going to go somewhere around 0.6. I yeah, we'll start with 0.6. We're not going to touch the main contrast slider, but when we come to highlights, we're actually going to raise the highlights. And we're going to go quite a bit with these, about 65, 64. Let's do 65. That looks great. We're also going to open up the shadows, about plus 35, 40. Let's do about plus 40, as well as opening up the whites. So let's do about 15 there. And I'm just going to check, make sure nothing important is blown out. You can see here some of the bokeh is blown out here, but that's going to be blown out no matter what we do. So that's totally fine. I'm super happy. No skin is blown out or anything like that. So as we come down, let's take a look at the blacks. And we're going to do somewhere around minus 10 or 12 or so. Minus 12 is fine. You can see here that I'm clipping a little bit of her pants, some of her shirt, but she's wearing black. So that's totally fine with me that a little bit of information is lost. It's very, very marginal. As we come down to the clarity, we're going to cut the clarity just a little bit just for sake of edges on her face. We don't really want to emphasize those, so we'll just cut them down a little bit. Let's do minus 15. That looks good. On vibrance, we're going to come down just a little bit on the vibrance. Somewhere around 30-ish. That's good there. Let's do minus 30 on vibrance. And with the saturation, we're actually going to come up a little bit. Let's do about plus 20. There we go. So now that we have our basic panel all taken care of, let's scroll down some and we're going to get to the split toning because we want to add some different colors into the different sections of the image. So with our highlights, let's do around plus 60 or so. Plus 60 is fine. And then we're going to add that in now with our saturation. Let's do around, let's see, about plus 30 looks good. Maybe plus 35. Let's go with 35. And then with our shadows, we're going to come towards the cooler area, somewhere around 220-ish. Let's do 224. That looks good. And then we'll add it in with the saturation, and we'll go plus about 45 or so. There we go. So this is looking good. I'm super happy with the way our subject is looking. Basically, everything that we've done up to this point is solely for the purpose of making our subject look great. Now, at this point, what we want to do is we want to start focusing on the background. Because I feel like this background, while it's really nice, it's super blown out, shot at 1.2, it's really, really bright and a little bit distracting. And I think we can make a way more moody image here in post-processing by cutting down some of the exposure and some of the other aspects of the background. So check this out. We're going to start with taking the graduated filter tool, or you can press M on your keyboard, and we're going to... Double click on effect and it's going to zero out all the sliders. Let's bring our exposure down to about 0.90. And the next slider we want to look at is sharpness. Now let's bring this down to minus 100. Now this is a tool you're going to have to be very careful with on, on the sharpness because while we are going to make this background even blurrier, that is not a substitute for totally faking your depth of field. So let's start at the left side. I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and drag to the right. And you can see here it's gradiating very nicely throughout the frame. And if you hover over the node with your mouse, you can see the area in which this is being affected. 
Now it's starting to spill over on our model's face a little bit and her hands, so we do wanna get rid of that just a little bit. So to do that, I'm gonna scroll over to the brush, click erase, and I'm just gonna erase that very gently off her face. And you can see here it's already making a big difference. I'll turn it off and on, boom. Big difference, already looking better. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the top right hand corner of the frame. And I'm gonna drag diagonally this time. And you can see here where it's affecting her. So we're gonna take the brush again, click erase, and just, and just erase it off of her face, great. We're going to do this again from the bottom right hand corner. So this is great. This is off to a good start. You can see here as I turn it off and on, it does darken up the background very nicely. And it allows our subject to really pop off the frame, but we're not quite done yet. We're going to close that and we're going to go to the radio filter this time or pressing shift M on your keyboard and we're going to do something a little bit different, but to the same effect. We're gonna double click the effect to zero everything out. On this one, we're gonna do minus 0.1 on exposure. Then we're gonna do a little bit of dehaze, about 20, 25, 26 or so. 26 is fine. And then also we're gonna cut the sharpness down substantially, minus 100. Again, be very careful with this because this is not to fake your depth of field. You're not gonna get awesome bokeh shooting very, very, very deep depth of field and then hitting it might with minus sharpness. That's just not how it works. Then on the feather, we're gonna make it all the way up to 100. So that makes the gradation of it very, very, very soft. So then we're just gonna make an oval roughly around our model's face. And you can see here how much it's affecting. With the feather at 100, it's really, really hitting her face a lot. So we're gonna do the same thing with the brush and we're gonna just make sure we brush right off of her face, nothing else. There we go, that looks great. Now let's check and you can see here, it's not hitting her face and that's great. And even further, let's take it off and turn it back on and you can see it's really made a big difference there on the background. And what that minus 100 does on the sharpness is it really increases the depth of field effect that we've already achieved by shooting at 1.2. So let's close this tool and let's take a look at where we started with the image and where we ended up with the edit. I'm super happy with that. I think it's a lot more of a moody image at this point. I think the colors pop, the background pops, and our model looks great in the frame. Well, let me know what you think of this edit. Remember the download link to the raw file is down below in the description. So if you followed along with this edit or maybe you went in a completely different direction with this image, make sure to post it on your social media of choice. Make sure you tag me in it so I can see. And I'm James Young with jamesyoungphotography.com and this has been episode number five of Teach Me How to Lightroom.